Ryan. I'm on. <laughs> um, welcome to Tri-State Worship Center. If you are a first-time guest with us, if you have not stopped by the uh, Connection Center out there, the Welcome Center, uh, in your bulletin you should have received when you came in, there is a, um, a guest card, connection card. If you will fill that out, take it out to the Welcome Center. Uh, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. We have a gift for you. Um, so if you'll do that, um, we'd appreciate it. And thank you for coming today. We don't take up an offering in a traditional way, <laughs> but we do need you to give. So uh, we ask you to drop your tithe, your offering, your building fund commitments into the boxes located throughout the building. You can text to give, 740-370-4342. You can go online at tfwc.org and you can give there. Or you can swipe your card at the kiosk out in the foyer. If you're watching online, we would appreciate your support. If you can uh, go to one of those four ways of giving. We'd really appreciate it if you just come in the building and drop it in a box. But if you can't do that, uh, do it in one of those other digital ways. And if you could do that, we'd appreciate it. Get your cell phone out. Got your cell phone. Go to the TSWC public page, TSWC. Share that on your uh, page. And uh, I think, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, we had over 9,000 views. Over 9,000 views. And so uh, if you keep doing that, we'd appreciate it. Here, Vic. Hello again. Okay, so um, I'm going to just shoot down activities really quick before we get to the women's conference. Um, the annual Valentine's dinner is February 10th. It's going to be 5 o'clock. Uh, that is the last fundraiser for the teens for their Winterfest trip every year. $25 per couple, $5 for kids, and that the $5 for kids includes child care and their dinner. So you can't beat that. We're all going to be in the same building. Um, but yes, you want to come to that. It is so much fun, and the food is always fabulous. So mark your calendars for February 10th to take out your sweetheart here at the church. There is a veterans meeting immediately after the service in the adult classroom, uh, and that is with Karen Partridge. Also, Kid Fest deposit is due today. See Rhonda McKinney, and you can give that to her at the Kid Fest meeting in the primary classroom after church again today. And men's meeting, I'm just going to go with it, Terry. Men's meeting is rescheduled for tomorrow night, and it's going to be here. And that is at 6.30 if you've not been to a men's fellowship meeting. Dinner is provided, and it's, awesome, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome night. Okay, yesterday's women's conference. We're hey, in. hey here. my what? microphone's working now. I don't care. Okay, okay so, <laughs> so back to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just some kidding. It's all about you. <laughs> The women's conference yesterday. Who was here? Oh my goodness! It was so awesome. Uh, Morgan, Morgan was um, leading praise and worship yesterday, so the praise team gets hit up here, and Amanda goes, "Now we're channeling the uh, inner Morgan today in praise and worship." So if Morgan gets this message, it's all about you, girlfriend. It was, uh, it was amazing. So I'm going to start with this. Sandra Stevens, stand up. Oh, wow. Sandra, I'm telling you, she led the food team. The food was amazing. Everything just ran like clockwork. Okay, everyone that helped Sandra in prep and food service, stand up. Everybody. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. There was a lot more than that, even. And um, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you how it went. We did a lot of prep on Friday. Then at five, uh, 6 o'clock on Saturday morning, we did the rest of the prep. We got everything ready, and we shot it in the warmers, and it was on the stove and in warmers and everything else. Then the women got to come in here. Then the men jumped in. It was a tag team. It was awesome. The men jumped in. They transitioned from breakfast to lunch with chafing dishes, all the hot food, everything, had it ready. Then after an amazing lunch, we, the women got to come back in, and the men went and completely reset the entire church, did the dishes, and we were done. <laughs> Sandra comes in. She's sticking her tennis shoes on the kitchen. She's going, I can't believe i got to clean this kitchen up. I said, Sandra, it's already right done. She goes, well, who did it? I said, well, the men did it. Bye, go home. <laughs> so you guys, you just, you never fail to amaze me if it wasn't for just the love of God in, in all of you that just jump in at any need. I mean, I could pop on Facebook tomorrow and say, oh my goodness, this is going on. And I'd get enough 
to cover everything, food, help, anything. Shoveling snow, whatever. Yes, and Bill Harless came and cleaned our lot off yesterday. Thank you, Bill Harless. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I had to give praise where praise was, was due, and I just, I love you guys. You're just amazing. You just, it just make my heart warm. Hi, Vic. Would you like to say something? You, you know what? I, I was really, here's what I was most surprised with this morning. I figured every man and child would walk in so, like, not rightly dressed. Because we know that all the women were here yesterday. And, you know, like there wasn't anybody to lay your clothes out for you. Ouch. I mean, that's not how it happened. Hey, I don't lay your clothes out. Yeah, for you. you do. You're like, sit on the bed. I'll dress you after I dress myself. <laughs> that's why it looks so good. Um, no, I, I want to just say I do appreciate everybody that pitched in yesterday. It was just an incredible, incredible day. And uh, I, I hope there's more of those to come. Uh, that, and, and someone said, well, we had a women's retreat or women's conference yesterday. We're having a, a marriage conference next month. When is the men's conference? I said, maybe we don't need one. And I said, the men will have a conference on the women planet. Because they ain't going to do it. <laughs> All right, let's stop this silliness. Okay. I tell you, I'm a happy girl today. Um, prayer requests. Uh, Kevin Roach, Laura Carey, Tom Sullivan, Chris Ayers, Angel White, Martha Payton, Jim Pinkerton, who is here. Yeah, yes. was in the hospital, in the but hospital? got out yesterday. Yes, but let's continue. He came where he should be. That's church. right. Let's continue to remember him. Uh, the Thornhill family, they've had a loss. Uh, Debbie Stutes and Justin. Joyce w Wamsley, I'm sorry, which is Teresa Adams' mom. Hannah Staten, of course. May Wheeler, which is Kathy Hughes' mom. Um, she had a stroke, and she is not doing very well. Jessica Dye, Tracy Rousey, Ron Tririg, uh, Cindy Jo Staten, and Bud Edwards has a procedure uh, tomorrow. Let's all stand. You glad to be in the house of the Lord? Say, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Do you have a special need this morning? Just lift your hand up. Hold it there for just a minute. I want you to look around. Look around. We're not alone. We all have needs, but how many know we serve a big God? Let's take our needs to him in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege that we have of coming into your house and gathering in your name to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray this morning that as we do that, you'll inhabit the praises of your people. God, I know that while you're here, you can supply every need according to your riches and glory through Christ. So we just present the needs that we've mentioned, those that are represented by an uplifted hand, those that are on our prayer list and our bulletin. God, that you would just supply those needs. Whether they're spiritual, physical, financial, emotional, we know that you're able to do all things. Let us hear reports of victory of how you've touched your people. God, I pray this morning you'll bless the offering. Multiply it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In everything that we do today, let us point people to Jesus Christ. We love you. We praise you. We bless you. For it's in his name that we pray. Someone shout amen. amen. Go greet someone in the name of the Lord. Tell them you're glad to see him in church.
Let's just stay in that in that attitude of worship. Let's not leave that. Let's stay right there. And I want uh, Stephanie Simmons. I'm sorry, Stephanie Jordan. I only know you as Simmons. I'm sorry. I know it's been 11 years. Come and come and share a testimony. so just bear with me um a lot of you know um sometimes when god tells you to do something you really kind of like seriously i don't want to do that but you have to obey him um christmas my mom i almost lost my mom on christmas she was septic and we didn't know it but she passed out and she passed out on us and dad and I were in the bathroom with her and I kept trying to cut get her away because she'd wake up and she'd pass back out and as I held her not knowing what to do this peace came over me and I started to pray for her and in that still quiet as you're standing there and you're trying to keep it together because that, you know that's what women do we keep it together sorry dad um, God stood there and he held me so I could hold her until they came to get her when she got to the hospital her blood pressure was 50 over 20 and she's not supposed to be here the nurses were in shock that she walked out of that hospital but we serve a God that is able and that is willing to do that so as you sit and you struggle and you don't know what to do, just stay still because God will stand there in that quietness and he will hold you and he will say, just, just let me take care of it because he's the father and he will take care of it. There's a calm that covers me. place of sing that very same verse again but I want to read you a verse James chapter 5 I don't know if you figured this out yet or not but I'm a weirdo Amen. I'm a weirdo I don't like doing anything that anybody anticipates I always want to be spontaneous I always want to be just in that moment with the Lord. I don't want to do things because we've got them on a list of things to do. 
we have a list because everybody needs to know what key we do songs in because if we do them in different keys as we found out during practice this morning uh, it doesn't work out very well maybe that'll make sense to you in a minute James chapter 5 verse 14 are there any are there any among you that are sick they should call for the elders of the church have them pray over them anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord and their prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make them well I believe in what the Bible says I know some people say, not allowed to use oil in church anymore. That went out. No, it tells me right there that we are, and we've got it right here. And so I want, I want Linda to sing that, that same verse that she just sang. And if you're here this morning, you, you're sick. I wish that K.O. and Deb and some of you warriors of, of faith and, and prayer wars would come and help me. But I want to pray for the sick this morning. Listen, I'm not... I don't get into the, I don't even know what you call it, the hype of it. I, I'm not about the hype. I hope you know me better than that. That's not about the hype. It's about when I feel like the Lord wants us to do that, that's what we're going to do. And if you're here this morning, you don't understand that particular dogma or doctrine, uh, just, just hang in there with us for a few minutes. Just hang in there with us for a few minutes. Sing that, Linda. There's a calm that covers me when I kneel down at your feet. It's a place of healing. It's a place where I
care why God is moving. He wants to take care of whatever is hindering you. And don't take it back out with you. Come up here. Let someone pray with you. Just walk up and receive what you need. place of healing. 
I need us to understand something this morning that that 
what separates what separates a a Pentecostal church from a non-Pentecostal church is that that we we allow the Spirit of God you know to just kind of have the service not just not just today not just this Sunday but you know every Sunday I think we have a plan we have you know we want everything to be done decently and in order uh, but then we want the Holy Spirit to interrupt any time and and if you're here and, and and maybe that's a new experience to you I'm so glad you're here I'm so glad that you can experience that uh, not that there's anything wrong with other churches at all I'm not that's not what I'm saying but there is something right about being able to experience the Spirit of God and the liberty that that brings and the freedom that that brings and, and that you don't have to worry about whether you can sing good or clap good or dance good you can just be good and, and you can and you can worship the Lord and experience his presence we can pray for healing we can pray for salvation we can pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and all those things are okay it's not bad it's not it's not out of control this is very much in control of what the Spirit of the Lord wants to do and so I, I want I'd want to explain that because and here's the reason I explain it Terry I know you're chomping at the bit hang on just hang on a second you got to remember my name's Terry too so the Lord keeps saying Terry and I don't know who he's talking about um, I think the, the problem in, in the charismatic slash Pentecostal movement is that sometimes these kinds of events happen and they don't get explained they don't get people go away and they don't understand what just happened and I want to make sure you understand why. there's nothing wrong with having knowledge and wisdom and understanding of what's going on and that is simply that the Spirit of God can fall fresh on a place if, if we can get out of the way and let him do it and, and so I want you to understand that now now lest we have to clean up a brain that explodes let me let Terry Sands say whatever it is he's got on his mind. my turn I come in here it's been a month. I could walk. I couldn't hardly walk. I can walk. Look at this. I can stop. I was healed right here. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, if you're going to praise him, praise him right. He wants me to tell the story about my mom. Four years ago, she got pneumonia. And it took me and my sister two days to talk her into going to the hospital. My mom was determined that she knew that she was going to die at home. That's where she wanted to die. She was 93 years old and had lived on her own for 40 years since my dad passed away at age 52. So she went to the hospital. We finally got her there. My family, everybody kept saying, maybe God is doing this because you have something to say to somebody who doesn't know that you have something to say. Maybe you're supposed to, you know, mentor. Maybe you're supposed to be there for a reason like that. And we all kept telling her these things. Well, she was there for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks and she threw a blood clot. They end up having to amputate her leg from the knee down. And she, it took her a while because she was still kind of in shock, I think. When they finally sent her to the nursing home up in Meigs County, because she lived in Guy Pliss, they sent her to uh, the nursing home up there and she was there. My brother said, she will not last 60 days, she will not. But everybody kept saying, maybe you're supposed to send your message here. Maybe there's somebody here at the nursing home that you're supposed to mentor. My mom was a very, very Christian person. I mean, I don't know hardly anybody that she, you just had to know her, you know. So anyway, she was in there and um, one day she, I was there when she finally realized, my brother and I, she was like, she was telling him, you know, about her leg and all that. And 
she um, she realized all of a sudden it came in her eyes. She's like, "Oh no, I'm not going to be able to go back home by myself. I can't, I can't go back home because I can't take care of myself." She lived in a mobile home. There's no way she could put a wheelchair in there. There's no way she could use crutches in there. And it finally, she finally realized that she was not going home. So then she began to just kind of get down, you know. And finally, the Lord put upon my heart something to say to her. I've never had this happen to me before, but it was a strong, strong feeling. You need to go talk to your mom. So I finally got up to talk to her because I was working at the time and weekends was the only time I had free. And I went up and I talked to her and I said, Mom, I don't think you were meant to be here to mentor. If you did, that's great, it's good. But I think the Lord put upon my mind and upon my heart to tell you that maybe it's you he's testing. He puts you on your back to look up and he is testing your faith in him I know you wanted to die at home but the Lord has other ideas and it's what he wants that's what it's gonna be and you need you know you need to listen to him he is the one that has your final say and he is the one that's gonna decide you know where you where you're gonna die at but the minute I told her Maybe it's your faith that God's testing, not everybody else's. Her eyes brightened up, and she looked at me, and she went, Oh, Jeannie, oh, Jeannie, that's it. That's it. And she seemed to accept that, and she was very, her mood just changed. She, she knew that's what it was. No, she didn't last 60 days. She last, I mean, seven, or 90 days. My brother said 90 days, three months. He said, I doubt that she'll last 90 days. I doubt she'll last three months. She lasted 63 days and went peacefully. But that's what the Lord chose for her. But he wanted her to test her own faith, make sure that she had faith in him, and let him do the leading, not her. So we have to remember he is the one that leads all the time. We have to follow. And we are the ones that has to, we can't just say, no, Lord, I want to go this way. And the Lord say, no, you go this way have to follow him and she needed to follow him thank you come on Todd you might as well sit down for a minute no you got to come up here like she did you might, I, we might need to cut the live feed Just. thank you pastor Shut up, Jonathan. <laughs> you didn't do that this morning. Um, I would just like to say that when I came here this morning, I was parked out front, and um, the burdens and trials of this life had had me so burdened that I was just crying, listening to the music, and then I thought, it's time to dry them up, go in there and pretend like nothing's wrong. And um, I came in, and the spirit started moving, and I wanted to come up front, and the devil was like, well, no, don't interrupt the service. But you know what, Ryan... The discernment of the spirit he turned around and he told me exactly what was going on in my life and I hadn't even talked to him and I just thought God you're here this morning you're gonna do a work and when I went to the altar I was praying I just said God I want to start clean I want everything erased and start putting more faith in him and it was when uh, Caleb had told me at the altar he said what did Peter do when he took his eyes off of Jesus when he went underwater. And I thought just that little bit of taking our eyes off Jesus and worrying about our problems only brings you down deeper, like you're drowning. And that's how I felt. But I just gave it all to the Lord, and I'm telling you, the burden's been lifted. I feel great. And I tell you what, if you're here this morning and you're coming in this church and you're holding back and you've got problems in your life, right here is your answer and don't hold back don't hold them in don't leave another service when god's here and his word is true he said believe it and receive it and you'll be healed and i was healed this morning through bondage and just knowing that from now on i've got to look up and not take my eyes off of jesus because it only takes a little bit the devil's working today 
we're not made it to heaven yet. So I just ask that if you've got problems in your life, you know, now's the time and this is the place. You have to come up here. And I'm just going to be real quick. Right. I'm, I'm going to throw a challenge out to the men in this room. Guys, our women brought something back here today. <laughs> they brought that in here. And we are feeding off of that. And it is now our responsibility to nurture that. Just the same as they give birth to children and we nurture and are responsible for our homes. They gave birth to that in here this morning and we need to keep encouraging that. We need to build it up and we need to use it. If there is one, and I say this with some trepidation, if there's any negative thing about any of this, it takes away my faith because this is fact. This is real. And you better take care of it. Wow, it's a world record. No, you're not. You submit to those who are over you in the Lord. Now get up here. No, you get get out of that pew right now. No. Everybody start in. Submission. Submission. It's not about whether you need it. It's about the people who need to hear you. I will forget what I had to say. That's what I was hoping for. We got a comedy show today. No, seriously, really quick, I just want to say that what has happened here today in the move of the Spirit has been total love and light. And if you listen to the songs that was sung about God's love remains, that is most of people's problem is in the depths of their heart. They cannot believe that lo God loves them through what they have done and through the things that they have allowed in their life. And that's why darkness comes in. That's why we fall into places that we can't get out of. So it's like this. Get it in your head that God loves you. He loves you. It don't matter. He loves you over what you did because that's what the sacrifice was for. And once you have that love in your life, then that means you got light. And if you got light, then that means darkness can't comprehend you. We have issues. We have problems. But if you know that God loves you in your problems, then you got light in your problems and then the darkness cannot comprehend it. So the church needs to know that God loves them because you'll never ever convince people outside of the church that God loves them when you act like he hates you. So get it in your head that God loves you regardless of who you are. It's not about who you are. It's about who he is. You're not supposed to be good. He's supposed to be good and then he makes the situation good. All good. Really, really good. No matter what it is. It's good, good, good because it's God. Well, she preached my sermon. But I do have one story that I want to tell you, and then we'll be dismissed. I'll save, I'll save the sermon for next week. Uh, there was a guy named... Well, before I tell that story, I, was, I just was sharing with our flautist and our violinist that uh, I was thinking, like, what's different about today? Well, it's because Sarah Copley's playing the violin. Thank you. Horatio Spaford was a uh, successful lawyer in Chicago businessman, had a lovely family, a wife, Anna, and five children. However, they were not strangers to a tragedy. Their youngest son died with pneumonia in 1871. In that same year, much of their business was lost in the great fire in Chicago of 1871. Yet God in his mercy somehow allowed their business to flourish 
and to uh, come back. On November the 21st of 1873, there was an ocean liner that was crossing the Atlantic uh, from the United States to Europe. It had 313 passengers on board. Among those passengers was Horatio's wife and four of his daughters. About uh, four hours into the crossing, the uh, ship collided with another ship and suddenly all those on board were in grave, grave danger. Anna, Horatio's wife, hurriedly brought her four children to the deck and she knelt there with Annie, Margaret Lee, Bessie, and Taneda, and they prayed that God would spare them if it was his will. Within approximately 12 minutes, the ship sank beneath the waters, carrying with it 226 passengers, including four of the Spafford children. There was a sailor rowing a small boat over the spot where the ship went down and spotted a woman floating on a piece of wreckage and it was Anna, Horatio's wife, still alive. He pulled her up into the boat. They were picked up by another large vessel and nine days later they landed in Wales, which is where they were headed. And from there she wired her husband who was still in Chicago and here's what the message said. Saved alone, what shall I do? Another of the ship's survivors, Pastor Weiss, later called Anna saying, God gave me four daughters. Now they have been taken away from me, and someday I will understand that. So Mr. Spafford gets a ticket, books passage on the next available ship to join his wife. And with the ship with about four days into the journey, the captain of the ship calls Horatio to the cabin. And he says, this is the place where it happened. Now, according to one of the daughters that was born after the tragedy, Horatio Spafford sailed over that spot, looked over the rail, where his four daughters perished, and he said, When peace like a river attend us, here this morning you're not in a right relationship with Jesus Christ what a great Sunday to turn it over to him what a great Sunday to let him become the Lord of your life what a great Sunday for you to be able to leave and say it is well with my soul even when the tough times come it can still be well because he is the captain of the ship 
And if you're here and you're not in a right relationship with him, the Bible says that if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. We're going to sing the chorus a couple more times. And as we sing it, if you're here not in a right relationship with him, I would love to pray with you this morning. But that choice is up to you. He gives you that choice right now to be able to say it as well. Come on, let's sing it together. Would you come as we sing? It is well. soul this morning. Now, I don't want some golf clap. I don't want some little, that was nice kind of thing. I want you with a loud voice and hands clapping as loud as you can clap them. If it's well with your soul, I want you to testify of that by shouting an amen or thank you, Jesus, or something while you're clapping your hands and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We serve an awesome God. That even when things are bad, we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. If you are a deist this morning, I have no hope for you. 
You think God spun it into order and just walked away and there's nothing about this. If you're a pantheist this morning, I have no help for you. You think that this creation is just part of God. But if you're a Christian this morning, I have great news for you. He is in charge of the universe. He knows what's going on. And all things will work together for good. And if it's not good, he's not done. I hope you'll come back tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll continue our series on living life wide open. We'll talk about passionate living. We're talking about when the fire goes out. We're talking about the giants that are uh, around us. And tonight we're going to talk about it's all about God. It's all about God. I hope you'll come back tonight. We'll, we'll do our, uh, our, our series sermon number four next Sunday morning on the, on the series that we're on, Are We Missing Peace? But what a mighty God we serve. Amen? Amen? I pray that as you're leaving this morning, you'll hug someone's neck, you'll bump someone's knuckles, you'll tweak their cheek, you'll give them a high five, you'll do something to let them know you're glad to see them at church. And, and one moment, please. One moment, please. Ramonda Thornhill stands among us. Oh, I don't want the mic. No, you, it, listen, if Tracy's going to use it, you're using it. I just wanted to say I attend the best church in the land. And I am so happy all of you attend with me, each one of you. If I have never hugged you, come and get me. <laughs> God bless you. We'll see you tonight. Scandal. 